everybody. So, um, I, uh, a D and D story time. Um, so I have a game where we play every week, and uh, uh, one of the so I'm D I'm DMing one game, and then there's another guy who's DMing another game, and uh, the so we go back and forth. We you know like we take a week off, so we have a week to prepare, or, or an extra week to prepare, and uh, the other DM was involved in an accident, not a car accident, but he got burned, pretty badly burned, second degree, third degree burns, uh, and he's in the hospital, he needs some skin grafts and everything. Um, so one of the other players uh, had a one shot, um, where a, like a, a goblin, uh, or not, yeah, goblin like special forces team, like uh, SEAL Team 6, uh, or, well, we're mostly hobgoblins, I think. Cut three hobgoblins, one bugbear, and then two goblins. Um, and then our mission is to infiltrate a citadel that is infested with orcs. So, you know, we're, we're, uh, fighting in the citadel, and there's like 50 orcs and six of us. And my friend is using the little like glass, you know, like the little pente kind of pieces, if you know what I mean, like little drops of glass. So I had a game that's been sitting in my pile of shame. If you're not familiar with the term, it's just, it's uh, like a pile like of, of boxes for of like stuff that you're, that you've been wanting, been meaning to paint for a while. This is um, Massive Darkness. Um, how many mini is kind of this? like maybe like 60 maybe like 60 minis are in here and uh it's you know it's a, it's a great game i love the game um but i mean it's worth it just for the minis because it works out to like a dollar a mini or something like like i think it retails for like a hundred dollars but you can find it on amazon for like 60 or you know sometimes with simon their their minis are really good and um uh, you know, you, um, you can get them on like eBay and like sometimes they put out bad games where you can get them for even cheaper on eBay. But I mean like this, this game, you could probably find it for like 60 or $80 tops on like Amazon, you know, or maybe cheaper. And it has some expansions that are really great too. And they have awesome looking minis. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought. This has been sitting in my pile of shame for a while. It has a ton of works in it. I'll paint them all up and I'll put it on my YouTube. <laughs> so, but I'm going to show you guys some, uh, some tricks that I use when I need to bang out an army quick because basically, well, I got these guys done in under like three hours, not including painting time. I mean, not including drawing time. I got them all done in about like, less than three hours and and they look they look really good you know i mean they they look really good for for that fast of an army you know paint job uh, but yeah we'll uh, we'll get on with it okay so to start with um i primed everything black and um <clears throat> which is super important because uh it's a when you prime your models it just makes it makes it so that the paint will stick to the models and it won't chip off when you you know hit it with your fingernail or something when it's dry um <clears throat> i'm also going to varnish them later but i'm using a um vallejo uh model air um uh model aircraft kit and it comes with a bunch of colors like um you know olive greens browns uh grays uh, um, a, like a, a, a white and um, uh, it's great because I, I painted the, the, all of these guys using almost just this set of colors. Um, the uh, the mo um, model air colors are they're thinned out a little bit they're a little bit runnier so um, and uh, also um, not quite so opaque so I'm gonna use them later to glaze over my uh, Zenithal priming paint job. 
So first off, I'm gonna do a pass at about like 45 degrees uh, on top of the black primer um, coming down on the models uh, to create some highlights, but I'm still, I still have shadows, but um, the, the shadows are, you know, gonna be like black and like the, the bottoms of the models. And then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna um, do a pass uh, almost like top down, almost like straight down on top of the models of like a white for my highest highlights, which is gonna be on their heads, you know, on their weapons, um, like things like that, like uh, focal points on the models. So here you can see what that looks like, um, what that uh, Zenithal Prime does. So it sort of creates like a map for you to see where your lights and darks belong on the models. Now, um, because I uh, did um, the, uh, the, all that painting with the airbrush, and because I thinned down those paints, um, I'm gonna go ahead and seal the models just to be safe because I'm gonna be doing glazing on top of them. Um, I, uh, I just wanna make sure that, that that paint job is sealed before I start glazing color on top of it. Now it's time to uh, start doing some passes of uh, semi-opaque color. Um, so I'm using, again, the um, Vallejo Model Air colors, and uh, I'm not sure if this is totally necessary, but um, I'm adding glazing medium to the airbrush paint, and it's already thinner and, you know, like less opaque, but um, uh, to, uh, to do the glazing, I'm, I'm mixing up about half and half glazing medium, half and half airbrush paint because uh, I want those colors to be nice and um, uh, kind of like semi, well, transparent so that the, the Zenithal um, the priming shows through. I'm basically just glazing color on top of the um, grayscale paint job to start with. And I'm just gonna repeat that step with um, another um, deeper, darker shade of green, and then also a, a blue. Um, actually, for the card art for this game, the orcs are painted blue, and I love how my blue orcs look. I'm definitely gonna be doing more blue orcs in the future if I paint more. <laughs> And rinse and repeat. Um, uh, you know, if you if you were a Citadel guy, I think that you could do this with contrast paints. Um, <clears throat> I think it would probably look pretty good if you did the Zenithal Prime thing and then you use the contrast paints over them. Um, <clears throat> I'm a Vallejo guy personally. Uh, I I love Vallejo's paints, so uh, you can't convince me otherwise. But this is, uh, I think I'm also using a, a little bit of inks. I'm using the uh, Vallejo game inks or, um, yeah, or, or, or washes and things like that. But, uh, but yeah, same thing with the browns. I'm gonna do uh, a few passes on that to get fur and leather and things like that. And uh, with the, um, the leather and the fur and stuff. Um, I'm also kind of trying to paint light to dark. Um, so I'm, I'm using lighter colors first because I'm doing washes. Uh, normally with acrylic paints, you paint dark to light, uh, but because I'm, I'm painting mostly with washes and glazing, um, I'm painting light to dark. Uh, and I'm trying to kind of like pin wash into places where, um, where my shadows are supposed to be. But the, but all the, the the whole time I'm using my um, my Zenithal Prime to tell me where those shadows belong on the model, and then I'm and I'm leaving some of the black, you know, from the uh, darkest uh, part of my prime in those shadows to to darken those shadows.
Next up, I'm gonna start uh, doing some dry brushing. Um, yeah, you thought I was just gonna do washes, huh? Um, <clears throat> so I am gonna be, I'm still using my uh, Xenithal Prime as like a roadmap of where my highlights belong. Um, but I'm gonna actually start, you know, dry brushing on some opaque pigments, like, you know, like actual paint paint onto uh, the models, like model paint. And, um, but I'm, I'm use uh, the whole time I'm, I'm going to be using my Xenithal Prime. I'm leaving my shadows where they're, where they are. And then I'm just, uh, sort of picking out my highlights, like with these metallics, I'm putting them in the lightest parts of the highlights. And then I'm leaving them off the shadows. The shadows are still going to be black. And then the highlights are going to be that, um, metallic metal. And I'm also going to use a, um, you know, a smaller brush to uh, pick out like little pieces of armor, like the um, these. I don't know what the, what they are. <laughs> they don't look like very good armor, uh, but pick out some of these smaller pieces and uh, fix up my boo boos where I went over them with the washes. But I'm I'm gonna again like I'm leaving my my shadows in, leaving them black, and only leaving the um, shiny metallic parts on the the tops of the models. So now I'm going to do the same thing with my flesh tones. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I can't stress enough how uh, how nice it is to have that little Zenithal roadmap um, to know where your highlights belong. Um, so, you know, I've talked about <laughs> uh, Citadel paints before and uh, these are kind of interesting. Like, I know a lot of people who say, you know, uh, Citadel paints are garbage, or they're like, oh, you know, contrast paints are amazing, or, or whatever. But um, I know a lot of people who who would prefer to use other paints, but they like the technical paints. They use Citadel's technical paints, and this is one of Citadel's dry dry brushing paints, and they are interesting. Like, they're it's a gel based paint. And then it has like a powdery pigment in it um, and uh, yeah they're kind of interesting for dry brushing I, I would actually you know I'm one of those people that would say like don't buy Citadel paints like get started with something better like you know Vallejo all about Vallejo but these are interesting I would recommend them give them a try So yeah, I'm just gonna keep uh, dry brushing. Um, I have a um, another uh, unintentional dry brush paint. Uh, this is a goblin green or something like that. Um, that's another one of my problems with the Citadel paints is that they don't seal very well and they dry out pretty quick. But um, they they work pretty well for um, uh, dry brushing or or this color does at least. It's just an old dried out Citadel paint. I wouldn't try and paint. I wouldn't try and do anything else with it you know, uh, but I'll dry brush with it. Again, more, um, more dried out Citadel paint. So, so yeah, I'm going to be using this, um, I think it's a, a bone white, like a, a bleached bone or something like that is the color um, and uh, I'm just gonna um, be really careful and go in and kind of like dry brush um, edge highlight all of their little teeth uh, <clears throat> and I'm using my smallest brush that I have and I'm using the side of the brush to just kind of like drag across the teeth you know and just put a little bit of pigment on there because you can see how, it's, how small, you know, I mean, smaller than your fingers or smaller than the tip of your finger. So teeny tiny teeth. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush the, uh, use the same color to dry brush anything that looks like bone. Um, 
and, you know I should be I should have sealed these guys before I did this um, because when you have these thin little glazes you can definitely peel up paint when you're dry brushing it because it's kind of rough on the, the paint you know it's like you're scrubbing it off but um, but yeah I didn't but it came out okay And uh, I decided to um, do just a teeny bit of dry brushing on my uh, leather too to kind of pick out some of those um, uh, highlights and uh, but yeah I mean you know again using the Zenithal Prime to, to show me like give me a color map and, and show me exactly where those highlights need to be it helps so much. Now I'm going to black my bases. Um, <clears throat> I wish that I had not done that. I wish that I had uh, like textured them. Just, but you know, if I was going to do that, I would have done it um, before I uh, primed them. You know, uh, I can go back and do that, but um, you know, it doesn't. It just doesn't look as good. Like having a black base doesn't look as good as having some like just throwing some dirt on there and painting it. You know, and that's where we're at. Um, these guys are ready to go. You know, that's just a few passes of um, some washes and a few little bit of dry brushing and, you know, blacking the bases. Um, they're ready to go for tomorrow's game. Uh, are they going to win any painting awards? No. You know, are they going to, um, <laughs> uh, what, did I get them done in three hours? Yes. Uh, are they ready to go for tomorrow's game? Yes. You know, um, but yeah, I'm going to seal them again and then, uh, uh, just do like a, a, a few more little washes and you can totally steal your models and then come back to them and, and keep painting them later. You, I do it all the time. I do it multiple times on models sometimes, especially if I'm doing a, a, a good paint job. So now I'm going to do some more um, washes on the, uh, the weapons. Um, uh, I want them to look a little dingier and, and rusty. Um, I. Uh, I don't like the idea of orcs taking too good a care of their weapons. Um, I, you know, I want them to look like sort of rusted junk, but not completely rusted junk. Uh, so after I, um, after I do a wash on the weapons um, and you know armor and stuff, um, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna pick out some spots with uh, the uh, the silver, the of uh, uh, model air silver or aluminum or whatever it is that came with the um the air war set and uh i'm gonna um pick just pick out spots like be selective and pick out little spots that i want to highlight to make uh the weapons and armor or make it look like they've been at least shining or sharpening their weapons you know that they haven't fallen into complete disrepair like orcs at least know how to sharpen their axes And that's the finished paint job, or at least these guys are definitely ready to go for tomorrow. I mean, you know, I could keep going, and like I do plan on, on coming back to some of these guys, but you know, for the mob, for the, the war host, um, you know, like they're ready to go. Like the, the, the bosses and stuff, I might come back to them later and give them a little bit more TLC. But, um, you know, or I mean, this is a good jumping off point if you're gonna try and do like a nice, pro paint job or whatever you know um they look good and i'm really happy with them so anyways yeah thanks for watching um i hope you feel inspired